settled and now the floor is for uh, Dr. Johan Valentin Mattei. Uh, Johan is a uh, uh, PhD scientific researcher in uh, systems uh, biology of aging group the, in the Institute of Biochemistry of the Romanian Academy. So please, uh, Johan, the floor is yours. Thank, thank you very much, Didier. I will share. Um, so I'd like to talk about uh, the work conducted um, uh, in our department, Systems Biology of Aging Group at the Romanian Institute of uh, Biochemistry, um, which aimed to demonstrate uh, the possibility to predict uh, successfully predict synergisms between longevity associated genes in C. elegans. Uh, in our case, we worked with ODR3 and IFE2. So, as you know, um, there are a lot of single gene interventions that have been performed in model organisms uh, for lifespan studies, for longevity studies. Over 2200 have been reported in literature. Uh, a great deal of them are functionally conserved across taxa. They share expression patterns. Um, but with regard to gene interactions, with regard to synergy, especially between genes, there is, um, there is a paucity, a relative paucity of data in scientific literature. Um, there has been, there have, have been some studies into gene synergisms for uh, with regard to lifespan. However, most of these pertain to the IIS FOXO pathway, um, which is, of course, the best studied. And in C. elegans, uh, it pertains especially to the DAF2 and DAF16 mm -hmm. genes, which are, of course, as you know, DAF2 is the homologue of um, IGFR family of receptors in mammals, and DAF16, the homologue of uh, FOXO. So, uh, uh, beginning with, uh, of course, uh, Kenyan lab seminal paper in the early 90s that uh, made this case for DAF2. Uh, this has been the most widely studied functional pathway in C. elegans as well as other model organisms for aging. So DAF2, of course, regulates uh, endocrine responses to food availability, intermediate metab everything that almost everything that pertains to in uh, intermediate metabolism. Uh, it does have a proven effect on longevity, dour formation, fat metabolism, and so forth. And mutations that reduce functionality of DAF2 extend lifespan through a DAF16 dependent uh, mechanism. Now, because of this, uh, of course, the IIS pathway is the logical entry point for any studies pertaining to gene interactions in model organisms. Uh, our group is, of course, uh, mostly made up of bioinformaticians. Of course, we have wet lab expertise, but uh, so our, our coordinator, our head, uh, Robbie's idea was to uh, generate a bioinformatic pipe, uh, you know, create a database of putative gene interactions, as well as a bioinformatic pipeline that could successfully predict um, synergistic gene interactions for, for LAGs, for longevity associated genes, both negative and positive regulators of longevity. So uh, based on this, uh, a series of genes were selected. Uh, the main criteria was, as stated earlier, interaction with the DAF2 pathway. So there are genes that yielded a positive effect on lifespan in a DAF2 silencing uh, background. And uh, the shortlisted uh, genes and combinations were further manually curated until we wound up with a list of three genes that seemed extremely promising to us. And those are ODR3, IFE2, and CKU70. Uh, ODR3, uh, as some of you may know, is, is the ortholog of G protein subalpha unit in mammals. It's expressed only in a handful of uh, sensory neurons in C. elegans. And uh, ODR3 knockdown results in essentially olfactory mutants. So basically, they're animals that are unable to uh, have normal chemosensitivity in their environment. However, they are long lived. 
despite or perhaps because of this. IFE2 is, uh, is the orthologue of uh, mammalian EIF4E. So it's an elongation factor that's involved in protein synthesis and its inactivation as well has been proven to protect against oxidative stress and to extend lifespan. And decrease, of course, the rate of protein synthesis and thereby stabilize reactive oxygen species homeostasis. CTU7E uh, is, is, a, is a helicase. It's, uh, it's the ortholog of mammalian KU70. It's involved in, in DNA repair. And while it's silencing, does increase sensitivity to genotoxic stress and to heat stress and others. Um, it does increase the lifespan of DAF2 mutants by an insufficiently characterized mechanism. So it, it, it looked like a good candidate. So all of these uh, three genes uh, potentiate the life extending effects of DAF2, uh, of DAF2 silenced organisms. And with that in mind, we, we set out to assess the effects of combined interventions in these three genes on C. elegans lifespan and health span uh, to investigate crosstalk with the IIS pathway by way of DAF16. In other words, to verify whether any possible prolongevity effects that we find by silencing them uh, depend on the activation of the IIS pathway. And of course, in the process of all this to validate the bioinformatic pathway of generating predictions for gene synergisms in uh, the study of longevity. Um, uh, a quick note is, uh, so all of the, whenever, whenever I say uh, mutants, so in all cases, I'm referring to, to silencing. So these genes were silenced by way of RNA interference. Uh, we used, of course, the most widely used tool for this, which is the Oranger RNAi library for C. elegans, which is quite widely used for these purposes. Essentially, you feed the worm, uh, some of you may know, of course, you feed the worm bacteria, which have a plasmid that produces a double-stranded RNA, which interferes with the expression of the gene of interest. Um, and another quick note, whenever I will talk about increase in lifespan or health span, I'm referring to lifespan or health span as assessed by percentage change of mean and maximum lifespan and health span. So um, with that in mind, um, uh, our first, uh, our first uh, goal was to check uh, lifespan assays for uh, double mutants, ODR3 IFE double mutants, that is to say, ODR3 mutants fed with IFE2 RNAi. And we indeed found that um, the joint silencing of ODR3 and IFE2 yields an additive effect. That is to say, um, the percentage change of mean and maximum lifespan uh, is roughly equal to the sum of the individual effects on lifespan for the for the single mutants. As you can see in the figure on the left where uh, the green uh, curve, the green survival curve for the double mutant uh, has a percentage change that is roughly the sum of the individual single mutants. Um, CKU by way of contrast uh, dramatically decreased the extension of lifespan conferred by the ODR3 mutation as can be seen on the right. So um, ODR3 is uh, depicted in blue, ODR3 CKU double mutant is depicted in orange. So at least on average, CKU did not uh, impart a positive effect on lifespan extension. Uh, furthermore, uh, if you look see on the figure on the right, um, when tested on double mutants on ODR3 IFE2 animals, CKU again uh, decreased their lifespan. Uh, both uh, mean and maximum, as can be seen for the purple curve, the purple survival curve, as compared to the light green one on the right depicting the double mutant OGR3 IFE2. The only combination in which CKU70 was found to have a um, somewhat positive effect on lifespan was when silenced jointly with IFE2, where it yielded a um, statistically significant but biologically questionable 15% increase in uh, mean survival. So, okay, 
with this in mind, we set out to verify whether um, these effects depend or not on the IIS signaling pathway by way of DAF16, which is the most common uh, node to check this. So uh, using DAF16 uh, mutants and DAF16 ODR3 double mutants, uh, we check to see whether um, whether this uh, this particular um, factor is is involved in the joint in in the lifespan increase that is yielded by the joint inactivation of ODR3 and IFE2, and as can be seen in the figure on the left, the DAF16 ODR3 uh, double mutants depicted in light blue were shorter lived compared with the single mutants DAF16 depicted in dotted black lines, whereas IFE2 DAF16 mutants depicted in dotted red lines were slightly longer lived than the DAF16 single mutants. Um, DAF16 CKU depicted on the right in green, in the green dotted line closely mirrors the DAF16 single mutants. So it doesn't look like DAF, like CKU7 tRNAi influences the lifespan of double mutants in any way. Uh, again, PKU70 silencing does not improve lifespan. It uh, DAF16 CKU70 closely mirrors DAF16 as depicted on the left. So uh, CKU70 as well did not influence the lifespan of the quadruple mutant as depicted on the right in the purple dotted line, again, closely mirroring the DAF16 single mutant. So uh, what this suggests is that well, of course, CKU does not yield any positive effects on lifespan, and that uh, the IFE2 ODR3 combination is not does not appear to function in a DAF16 or DAF2 dependent manner. Now, to validate this further, we checked uh, using confocal microscopy for signs of nuclear translocation of DAF16. That is to say. Uh, worms expressing a fused fluorescent DAF16 GFP construct were analyzed for visualization of uh, uh, nuclear translocation of DAF16. And this could only be identified for intestinal cells in the ODR3 mutant and not in the IFE2 mutant nor in the ODR3 IFE2 double mutant which uh, of course suggests that the joint effect of ODR3 and IFE2 is not DAF16 dependent, possibly occurring downstream of the of DAF16 and of the DAF to DAF16 signaling axis. Um, good practice dictates that whenever you do feeding with interfering RNA for C. elegans, you also validate the data with constitutive mutants, with, with um, um, mutant strains uh, that silence the same genes that were fed by way of the Oranger library. So we did this. Uh, and while the effects were lower in magnitude, the trend was largely maintained. That is to say, um, ODR3 IFE2 yielded a, uh, an additive increase in lifespan compared with the single mutants. An interesting observation that we found here was that the absence of fooder, uh, so fooder is a compound that it's, that's added to C. elegans culture in order to sterilize them when you do a uh, long-term observation of lifespan and health span. Usually it increases health span uh, you, sorry, uh, usually it increases, um, uh, the addition of fooder usually increases the lifespan for all strains. Whereas in our case, we found that uh, the absence of fooder increased lifespan for all strains. Um, this is an open scientific question and we suspect that it's a hermetic effect that's at work here that accounts for this uh, observation. Now, um, having found uh, the additive effect of joint silencing of I IFE2 and ODR3, um, and of course, no significant lifespan enhancing effects on CKU70. We went forward to check for um, IFE2 and ODR3 joint effects on health span. 
Um, one of the most important uh, ways in which one can assess health span is uh, by way of motility. So it's an, by way of sarcopenia, an indirect measurement of sarcopenia. That is to say loss of motility with aging. And to do that, um, we devised a semi-quantitative score. We graded worms A, B, and C. That is to say fully mobile, which is A, corresponding to normal unencumbered motility. Uh, B or impaired worms, which corresponded to worms that could move either freely or on response to prodding, but on a radius no larger than 0 0.5 centimeters. And frail worms, which exhibited only faint movements, only in response to prodding and for a very limited uh, range, for a very limited axis. Um, analyzing this data closer, we found that the effects on health span um, while consistent with those on, on lifespan, did not closely mirror them. So for instance, the percentage spent in a healthy state, in a fully healthy state, um, was for, for ODR3, as opposed to the percentage of, um, uh, of their lifespan that they spent in impaired or frail states. So while ODR3 individually generated the highest effect on lifespan, this was not the case for health span. And conversely for IFE2, while the dual mutant uh, did exhibit a decrease in the percentage of frail state uh, worms that was significant. So starting from this observation, we decided to quantify the issue more thoroughly. And we made- uh, Jan, yeah, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Can you conclude in uh, two minutes, please, or two sure. or three? For sure. Um, because we're reaching, yeah, so, sorry. Yeah, no problem, you, you, sorry, sorry, I'm the, sorry. The last are paying for the first. <laughs> yeah, so uh, having analyzed uh, the transition between, between fully mobile and impaired and frail, we concluded that um, there's a significant uh, effect uh, in uh, the synergism occurs. Uh, it's a fully, it, it, so the increase in health span the decrease in transition from full motility to impair and frailness for the double mutants was a fully synergistic effect. That is to say, its magnitude was greater than the sum of the individual mutants. And the same could be found for pharyngeal pumping, where um, the decrease for the double mutant in the intensity of pharyngeal pumping uh, closely mirrored this pattern. And at day 15, um, the maintenance uh, of pharyngeal pumping was 187%, which is greater than the sum of the individual effects for the single mutants. Uh, we didn't find any synergisms for tolerance to oxidative stress or heat stress. Productivity was maintained. But the key takeaways are that ODR3 and IFE exert an additive effect on lifespan, a synergistic effect on health span as expressed by uh, motility and pharyngeal pumping that depletion of ODR3 and IFE2 does not affect fecundity, promotes muscle activity, maintains the activation of stress response mechanisms, and that ODR3 and IFE2 have opposite effects in a DAF16 background and approach the single mutant jointly suggesting convergence downstream of DAF16 and independence of it. CKU, of course, did not yield any effects. I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Vimbai Samukange, Gabriela Bunu, Dmitri Toren, Simona Gena, and Robita Takutu. Uh, the Gerontomics Fund, the Gerontomics Project that funded this work, as well as Maria Koval and Anton Kulaga for help with slide design. Thank you very much. Open for questions. Thank you very much, uh, Johan. Uh, sorry that I was pushing you. No so, problem. Um, sorry I yeah. went over. Yeah. No, no, no. It's I think uh, it's okay. We are uh, more or less in time. We have time uh, for I would say one question uh, but i don't see question in the uh, chat at the moment so if there is somebody who want uh, ah uh, alexandra uh alexandru uh yeah please uh, speak yeah hi uh Johan. really cool hey, presentation uh, i just wanted to ask you two very short bits sure so thing the first one is um related to the fact that you know c elegance is one of the organisms where very high lifespan uh full change has been seen so like you know like 200 300 percent has yeah. been seen in, in other studies and i was wondering 
these, these interactions between these genes are very interesting in terms of mechanism and in terms of figuring out, you know, what's happening and what's the sort of pathology of it. But at the same time, the sort of total lifespan extension, even together in an additive way, is kind of like 50% or something like yes, that, if I guesstimated yes. right from the plot. I yeah. was wondering, you know, how, 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 how do you think we could step further to sort of like um, look for interactions that have, you know, like 500% lifespan extension in worms, which is by any measure, you know, like not a lot, it's just a few months, but. Um... Sure, sure thing. So the way I would, uh, awesome question. Thank you. Th thanks a lot. So yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's an astute observation that, yeah, the effect in itself is interesting. We were happy to be able to find um, two genes that interacted synergistically on health span, additively on lifespan, but yeah, the magnitude in itself compared with other previously documented effects in C. elegans is not huge. Uh, however, I would say that this sets a precedent for the way in which one would approach synergistic gene combinations in C. elegans. And uh, hopefully with uh, you know, the assistance of my bioinformatically astute colleagues, we can, we can generate further data that will lead to testing combinations that may yield even higher um, lifespan extensions. So I'll take it more as a comment than a question and would say that, yeah, we should use this pipeline to identify even stronger genes that might yield better synergisms than the one here and presented. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you again, uh, Jan. And no, 